Hi, I'm Jason Belk, and I'm thrilled to share with you some tips and tricks on leveling up your network engineering skills, specifically within the context of prompt engineering using GPTs, whether that's chat GPT, Gemini, your internal corporate in-house GPT. These skills are going to help you today and beyond in whatever context you're using with these types of AI clients. So first off, I just want to share a little personal anecdote that for a long time, I was really skeptical of AI stuff where I, I had seen machine learning demos over the years and just, okay, yeah, you can identify a, a horse or a cat or a dog. That's cool. But how's that going to help me in my job? And what we're doing today, I think can actually, with a little bit of work, help you significantly in your job. And there's lots of different scenarios that we have in our tutorials on Cisco U that you should definitely check out the written form is what I'm covering here is the general vibe of that. But you're going to get a lot of value out of this. If you try it yourself, you experiment even more so than your typical network engineering experimentation. So what we have today are kind of three high level steps. First, I'm just doing what I'm doing right now. We're reviewing the requirements. We're going to talk about what GPTs are a little bit, not be a dead horse, but then move on to what is zero shot prompting and few shot prompting. I'm not going to pretend to be an expert in all this stuff. I'm learning it alongside with you, but hopefully from my novice learning and explanation, it can make you even more effective in your job than you already are. So first off, what's the scenario that we're talking about? What, what are GBTs? Basically behind the scenes, the, these AI models have a general purpose utility to them. Just like you have a Leatherman or a Swiss Army knife, the knife that has a screwdriver, it has a pair of scissors, it has a knife, it has 15 different things on it and doesn't do any of them particularly well. You want to have an actual toolbox if you're building a house. The same way, these GPTs can really do anything. And there, there are ones that have come out that are more specific purpose-built ones. But what, what I'm talking about today are specifically, you know, chat GPT 4.0 and things like that. Um, and of course, disclaimer, if as you're in a corporate environment, probably as you're listening to this video, adhere to your security guidelines for us at Cisco. That's using what's called Bridge IT. And the demo I'm going to be showing today is using chat gpt which i know is not recommended for internal cisco use but this is a demo i'm trying to show to the general audience i tried using it using bridge it but the, what, what i was doing wasn't quite coming out the way i was hoping so i know everything's improving over time so i just want to do what works today and hopefully as things improve we'll be able to have a demo using bridge it in the future all that to say is this first scenario we're, we're trying to envision ourselves i was in cisco it network operations for several years i feel the struggle of the network operations engineer and when our team was brainstorming ways to illustrate these GPT scenarios, I wanted to make sure that they were as operation focused as possible because ultimately those are the people who are keeping the lights running. <laughs> I, I know implementations are putting up new stuff and, that, and that's great. But usually on the implementation side, you have time to think and plan and execute. For those operations people, you're trying to fix broken stuff all the time. Um, so the, actually the, the example we have today is actually more of an implementations example, the first one. So we, we have using... Um, an engineer working on a data center project, you're tasked with configuring an out-of-band switch. So a switch that's talking outside the network to build connection devices, out-of-band switch based on specifications in an Excel spreadsheet. We all use Excel. It's the, the common language between analysts, engineers, and everyone else. So we, we see Excel spreadsheets all the time. And I'm gonna pull up what this Excel spreadsheet looks like. And basically in this Excel spreadsheet, it, ha it has detailed information on the connections that we're going to be working with. And we're, we're going to be talking to our AI client to basically read and infer and make connections based on the structured data we have here. Because that's one of the benefits of having Excel spreadsheets is that we have these columns and rows, whether that's switch name, you know, source gig 101 connected to a particular device, maybe a UCS rack, particular node, um, and on a particular VLAN with a speed connected me to another device, another rack on another particular VLAN. So the point of what I have here is not to try to teach you data center design because I don't have data center data center experience to speak to. I was more on the campus and branch side, but this example was given to me and I, I thought it was a helpful way to illustrate what we're trying to do here. So what we have an Excel spreadsheet with data and columns and rows outlining information that was given to us to then ask our GPD clients some questions. And I think that's really what comes down to the significance of what we're working with when it comes to GPT is that you have to really have to ask it thoughtful questions. And um, it doesn't know any of the context unless you tell it. Like e even this high level design of 
working with configuration files and GPTs doing things behind the scenes. It's this general purpose Swiss Army knife that unless you refine its thought process, it's just going to go off on Walla land and try the best it can. And so you need to almost be empathetic <laughs> to the AI and give it as much context as possible. So an, an example of doing the opposite of that is what's called zero shot prompting. And so with zero shot prompting, it basically means that you're throwing a use case at it without telling it any of the context. You're, you're, you're pretending like it can read your mind like you're a Vulcan. And so what we have here is a spreadsheet that's giving us, yes, a certain level of context that w with you as a network engineer, you can read the columns and rows and understand what a VLAN is and what a device name is and what a, what a, what a switch is. But what, what, what we want to do is have a configuration file produced from this spreadsheet where we as a network engineer with our context of our experience from certifications, from on-the-job experience, from directives we've gotten from our managers or other peer engineers, or maybe from emails. All those things are going on in your mind when you read this spreadsheet, but the AI doesn't know all that. All it knows is the spreadsheet and whatever instructions you give it. So zero-shot prompting means that we give it a very simple set of instructions for it then to follow. And in order for it to then make any decisions off that, it's doing the best it can. So the first set of instructions we're going to do is tell it to review the, the attached document and provide a configuration file for the out-of-band switch. So very simple instructions, produce a configuration file in text format, don't explain the process. Because sometimes it tries to teach you things. And in this case, we're not trying to teach anything on the networking side. We're just trying to learn how to use the prompting interface. So we have here ChatGPT4. Like I said, keep in mind the security considerations. Um, but what, what we're, we're, we're going to be doing is uh, uploading the... Excel spreadsheet. And this example is all on Cisco U tutorials. I'm copying and pasting in the lines of um, instructions. So right now we just have two lines. So it's having to read my mind and based on what we have in the spreadsheet and what I've given on the instructions and we'll see what it does. So it's thinking and we're reviewing the spreadsheet. I'll give it a second to think about it. Okay, so we have the generated configuration file, and it's doing the best it can based on the context we have. All we've told it is that it's an out-of-band switch, and we have this Excel spreadsheet. If you review the Excel spreadsheet, there's actually a pretty close mapping. We have, you know, G11 all the way down to gigabyte, I think, what, 48, and then 10 gigabyte, 1, 1 through 8. But it doesn't actually make the correlation that I'm even saying verbally as we're talking about this. In that, if we look at the output, this is not, at least I don't believe so, syntactically valid. Interface G1, like if, if I plug that into my switch, it's probably going to throw an error. Um, what we want to have is at least probably GIG, gigabit Ethernet 1. But it, from the spreadsheet, we just have the shorthand of G1. So it doesn't know any better. It's trying the best it can. And we need to have a little bit of insight and to say, oh, this is like readable to me as a human, but it's not quite readable enough for the switch. So we can ask you a few questions. Let's say whenever you see output from a GBT that doesn't make sense to you, the first thing you want to do is, okay, why is it thinking that way? And what kind of questions can I ask to help it produce better results? So one thing that was taught to me by one of my coworkers, Julio, um, that, that just helped me so much is that you could say, what questions should I be asking to make this output more accurate? And we can give us some additional context. So this goes from zero shot prompting into what, the few shot prompting concept. And I might be using those terms incorrectly, but my point is you're trying to help it understand the context of what you're trying to accomplish rather than saying interface G1 isn't right. Okay, but what are you actually trying to accomplish? We can say we are using a catalyst, we'll say 9K switch and another switch. and or that's probably not Catalyst 9K for data center, a, we'll just say Cisco data center, switch, pick a platform from the past five years. So now it's telling us some things. So I asked it what questions should I be asking. So it's answering that question with a question, almost like Jeopardy. And so it's saying, oh, so what outputs would be interested for a Cisco Nexus switch. Are we using Nexus 9K, 7K, et cetera? Are there different, you know, interface types? Are there VLAN configurations? Is there a span tree? So it has all these questions in the back, 11 different, 11 different topics with each of them sub question that it's thinking in the back of its mind, but it doesn't want to bother me with all the details. So if you want to make this switch configuration much better, 
you can start answering these questions and then asking it further questions and having this dialogue with the AI that allows you to hone in going from this general purpose AI and, and helping you hone in exactly what you want and say, oh, we have a Nexus 9K and um, no security compliance and no management interface details. And let's see what other questions we have here. And don't, don't worry about QoS, but yes, add speed and duplex for auto negotiation. And I'm, I'm not even typing all the words perfectly because it can figure out more or less from the context that we're trying to talk about. And it's, it's asking also, are these VLANs pre-configured on the switch or they need to be created as part of the configuration? We'll say um, the VLANs are not configured. I'm even just typing things here, configured as part of the switch. Give me a new config with these requirements. And I can say, don't guess, ask questions if you don't, if you don't understand. Because sometimes I've noticed on these GPTs, if you don't say something like that, it might just start making up things to try to, it tries its best to answer the question regardless of how much context you give. And when I say, I, I don't want you guessing, I want you to actually ask me if it, it's unclear. So we'll, we'll send that over. Okay, cool, security. Um, and now we have a lot more interesting configuration. We have some VLANs popping up of, of our VLAN 20, giving a VLAN name. We have our switch port mode access, speed, duplex auto. I, I'm not as much of a Nexus person, so I, I'm not gonna, quickly validate this output. But the point is that it's continuing to generate the config based on our outputs. And we can see it even change the interface names from G1011 to a Nexus, uh, was it 7K, 7K or 9K output, which has, you know, I assume Ethernet two slash whatever. Um, and so the important thing is when you're working with these GPT clients, when you're building prompts, regardless of whether you're a data engineer, campus branch engineer like myself, or even just an IT analyst trying to figure out someone else's work, you need to be asking follow-up questions. You need to be asking for clarifications. You need to be asking it what questions you should be asking. And that's going to take you a long ways from where you are currently in your GPT prompting work, regardless of the platform, to where you need to be and really helping you explore the future. So this has helped me a lot in my studies, and I really hope it helps you in your exploration of using these new technologies. Thanks a lot.